Welcome everyone, Ryan Dwyer here with Sheet Music Pianist, and I'm here with Fiona Joy Hawkins, who has Sheet Music on our website, and I'm delighted to be able to just uh, ask her questions, and I listened to one of her YouTube videos before this broadcast, and it was a very relaxing uh, cinematic song, and I was uh, reading that it was made up kind of for film, it seemed like, and I want to get the song right. It seems to be called A Happy Accident. Um, yeah, well, actually, I think it was called a film, something film score, and I described it as a happy accident. I see. Because yeah, because what happened is I went into the recording studio just with this idea to just sit down and just play and, um, you know, thinking of, of imagining that if I was playing along to a film score and okay. that's what happened. And I didn't even realise it was being videoed at the time. I didn't even know till right near the end. So that was the surprise for me. Oh, I love that. That's where the magic is, is where you're you're playing straight from your heart and you yeah. really can feel that on that one. I yeah. was impressed by how you were taking your time playing the chords. I don't really come across too many pianists who are comfortable playing at a very slowed down tempo and also are able to make it sound original. Yeah, and... maybe, <laughs> maybe my heart wasn't racing because I didn't know that I was being recorded. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the raw, yeah, the raw aspect that that could help. Um, and I loved hearing the way that the uh, sympathetic resonance off of the keys uh, off of the strings was just kept ringing and ringing and ringing. And you could you could just hear the richness of how the chords were blending. But then you transitioned into much. I don't want to call it upbeat, uh, but it seemed like the song took on a, a character yeah yeah your mm -hmm. dynamic range changed and that was wonderful as well so you could tell that that you were really trying to be in the moment and just let it happen <laughs> thank you I remember now it was called film score audition and I think that that resonance that you get you know with the chords crossing over and with the harmonics mm. um it's a lot to do with pedaling as well so which yeah. is an art unto itself <laughs> So they say, I never even think about it. It's just something I do. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I wanted to ask you uh, where you're from and, and some of these typical questions. So could, could you please just tell everybody, have you lived in the same place your entire life? Or? I've lived in Australia my whole life, um, but I've lived in lots of different places. My parents always moved quite a bit. So, and mm -hmm. my parents were very young when I was born. So my grandmother moved in when I was eight years old and um, and she kind of raised me and looked after me and bought a 100-year-old piano with her. And that was when I fell in love. So that was the original inspiration. Now, your grandmother, did she make her own music or how how did she inspire that? It had been my mother's piano when she was a little girl. Mm -hmm. And my grandma just always kept it. And she just, she bought it with her. It was a beautiful old piece of furniture. And it had a lovely tone. It was really old and, you know, but it wasn't a cranky piano. It was, it mm -hmm. had, it had a beautiful feel to it. And I learned that piano right through till about sixth or seventh grade. And mm -hmm. then I uh, decided that I probably had to, you know, up my standard a little bit, something that could hold <laughs> tune. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But that's wonderful that uh, the piano, you were still able to connect with it, even though it wasn't, you know, it, it, it wasn't cranky. That was good. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't cranky. It was a lovely old thing. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> now, and, and your mother played piano a little bit or yeah, so when I was eight and my grandma moved in, my mother showed me the staff and stave and she said, okay, so it was to me it was like a jigsaw puzzle. She said, now here's C and D and E. She showed me all of that. She showed me on the staff and stave where each of the notes sat. And then um, and then there was a whole pile of music there. So I got the music out and I taught myself for release and I could play the first page and a half within six weeks because it was a jigsaw puzzle. So I just had to sort of fit it all together 
together and learn how to read music. And um, I didn't really ever, ever think that I wanted to learn to just play other people's music. I really wanted to learn to play my own music because that's what I liked most was. Yeah, I was wondering music. about that if. <laughs> yeah. um, and and so you already had that desire right at the yeah. beginning of learning songs. Yeah. After I learned Fair Elise, I started sort of mucking around make, making my own music. And um, very early on in my piano lessons, I turned up with this little piece called Thoughts. And it was in A minor, it was in three, four. And my teacher <laughs> just nearly fell off the chair backwards because I was only eight and I'd written it all out. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and so and in three, four same. timing as well, which is unusual for a beginner. Yeah. yeah, so that was what I wanted to do. And um, I was very lucky because I had teachers that supported me. You know, you hear those horror stories about yes. People pain over their fingers well I had three amazing piano teachers they all supported me and they all uh, helped me to grow as a composer and incorporate my own compositions in my AMEB exams as part of that so that was great mm, that's beautiful mm -hmm. and so you continued on non-stop into college perhaps is, is that um, uh... I I did all of my grades uh, before I left school and then I stopped because I got married and had children mm -hmm. and I didn't get a piano again until um, till my late 20s and then I, I had to relearn. So I went back and redid sixth grade, seventh grade, almost redid eighth grade and I thought, why am I doing this? I don't want to teach piano. I just want to be able to play well enough to be able to play what I write. <laughs> so that was when um, I went into the recording studio for the first time at 38. Oh, wow. So a long time. And, and I had quite a few compositions and I kind of did it an album a year because I'm prolific as well. So I felt like I really had to catch up for a lot of missed years, you know, because that was my life's dream to yes. do that. Why did I leave it till I was 38? I don't know. Per perhaps <laughs> that's um, that phenomenon of the, the desert in the soul that, allows you to create the empty space in order to have fresh uh sounds yeah, so yeah. so for you that worked out very well yeah maybe you've got more to say as you have as you get older and you have more life experience because when you're composing you have to have stories to tell you have to have highs and lows you have to understand life maybe mm. maybe young composers can compose beautiful music but it's not as heartfelt or as wise maybe mm. that's a good point I yeah. had a lot of experience at, you know, at 38, mm -hmm. having had two children, I had an autistic child. Um, you know, I had, a, there was a lot of sadness in my music and a lot of that comes from my life experience. Yeah, sometimes sadness though does sound um, quite uh, joyful in its own special way. Yes. Yeah, there's beauty and sadness and sadness in beauty and people, mm -hmm. what I put down at the piano with tears, somebody else can take great joy from and, you know, really get something positive out of it. So I always try and remember that. <laughs> I would like to hear about your Celtic heritage. I read that there's, there's something about the heritage that has inspired you. Yes, my grandfather came from Scotland when he was eight years old. And uh, I, I had one of those Ancestry.com tests done and 100% of my heritage goes back to Scotland and Ireland. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, so which is really interesting. Um, so I think somehow that the essence of that comes out, you know, it must be a DNA thing. It comes out in my music quite often that it has a sort of a, a Celtic sound to it. Fantastic. So it's it's in your DNA. I think so. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I was reading into your awards that you've mentioned, and feel free to mention more than I bring up, but I had uh, talked to you about your ARIA-nominated album called Blue Dream, Yes, and you had said that that's like the Grammys, and it's you, like, yeah, yeah, but it's Australian, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. still, just as significant. So, <laughs> yeah, and it was in the world music category, but it was in the world music category because they didn't know where to put it. Hmm. <laughs> they didn't know what to do with it. So, um, because in Australia we don't have 
new age as a category. We just have classical and classical is, you know, obviously Bach, Beethoven, Mozart. There's no neoclassical. <laughs> uh, so it went into world music and it, it made the top five. So that was really exciting. Wonderful. Thing. Uh, unexpected, of course. Yeah. And since I brought up the Grammys, you did have a Grammy nominated uh, song. Um, well, it wasn't my album, and it actually mm -hmm. was a Grammy winning album. Well, winning wrote... is much different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, I had one, I had one song that I wrote for that album. So I can't say that I won a Grammy, but I did have a song on a Grammy winning album. So that was pretty exciting as well. For sure, I know that a lot of musicians dream of having a song uh, just make any chart in in one of these and. Uh, it, it must have just been such a highlight of your life at that time to be able to be associated. Yeah. That was exciting because the song um, had meant a lot to me. You know, it was, it was a, it's, it's Grace called Grace. And I've done mm -hmm. my own versions of it as well because it was on um, an album by Ricky Kedge and Vita Kellerman. And I have it on my own albums. And um, and there's quite a story to it. And it's a very sad story, but it's um, it's a song that's been quite popular and has lyrics as well. So there's vocal versions, instrumental versions, and and lots of people seem is, to cover that. Is song. that? It seems like I recall that song in the sheet music site. Yes. Is is that? So yeah, oh, that's wonderful. Movie. So we'll have to try to highlight that song <laughs> for people to grab hold of. Yeah, that and Blue Dream from from the Aria nominated album have been probably my two of my favorites. You know, so <laughs> it's good deal. People and so like. what what inspired you to make your songs into compositions cuz uh so you know a lot of a lot of recording artists they don't take the time to uh, make sure that they're in composition format and yes. and, and so mm -hmm. i'm i'm wondering was it a fan of yours that had requested it or uh, lots of people have requested it way more songs have been requested than i've ever put into sheet music so I figured that I should start, you know, putting some of the more popular songs um, into sheet music. Mm -hmm. um, I have a sheet music book um, and I've got a lot more titles that I've got to get up onto, onto your uh, platform as well, which I've just had done recently. So bit by bit, I'm getting there with it. But it's it's always a big job. You know, I don't yes. do it myself, but I have to edit. And I've tried, I have tried doing it myself, but I because I'm classically trained rather than IT trained, I do it with pen and paper and it just gives you a big headache. So I do understand. I, I have it done on Sibelius by somebody else and then I edit it, but it's still time consuming. So um mm -hmm. and I Yeah, because you just want to make sure that it comes across conveying yeah. the right feel yeah. of yeah. Yeah. yeah and and I have 300 songs. So what I do That's try and do that is a little bit different. I don't like a lot of the louds and softs and crescendos, decrescendos, a lot of that sort of um, directional um, stuff, you know, the retards. I don't put all of that in there because I think it's really important to allow people to have their own interpretation of my music. Mm. So I always recommend they listen to the music to see how it's played, mm -hmm. but you've got to fall in love with a piece of music and you have to be able to um, be allowed to have your own interpretation and if a composer writes every little thing it becomes too directional and it just mm. you just take that away from people so i keep it simple well thank you for sharing that mm -hmm. i also am wanting to finish our interview today with maybe you have a special story from your music career that you just have never forgotten and it stands out as the most significant time and um Perhaps you would be willing to share that. <laughs> I always, always wanted to be a part of Wyndham Hill. You know, when, as, when I was 18, I lived for a short space of time in San Francisco and I heard George Winston and I thought, this was way before I'd gone into the recording studio, so I had no career then. But I heard his music and I thought, I think I can do that. I'm sure I can do that. My heart's dream is to do that because I can write music. So um, I contacted Will Ackerman and I heard nothing mm -hmm. back. And then I read somewhere that there, Will said there are 3 million George Winston wannabes in the world. And I just went, okay, that's it. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> another one of them. So, and then when my, one of my albums was charting at number one on the Zone Music Reporter. Um, now, I think it was the New Age Music Reporter at the time. 
um, it changed names. Mm -hmm. When it when it was charting at number one, I got an email from Will Ackerman. I just out of the blue from him directly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he said, "I think you better come over here because I'd recorded in MIDI. I hadn't, I didn't have a piano to record on. That was, you know, like a studio nearby that had one. Mm -hmm. So I think you better come over here and record on a piano, Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and what he loved to do was to find people that he could really take to the next level." And so I went over there and that was really the beginning of my career. My first album was Blue Dream that Incredible. I did. With, I did quite a few albums with him and learned so much. And that was, that was a gift to my career. Wow. Yeah. That's special for many reasons. Yes. For many, many reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. And I'm just looking forward to, sharing this interview on Instagram, Facebook, and getting the word out. Thank you so much for having me, Ryan. I'm, I'm just stoked. This has been great. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. See you later.